What's going on, people? True Radio on WOVS Radio coming to you live down by Howard University. And yes, the panel looks a little bit different tonight. She to Pete and got all business like on us. GOP then put on a couple of pounds and lost the Because shade. it's all poly. Okay, man, never mind. Hey, you know how we do. We interchangeable, man. We move around. We have affiliates with the net with the network that, you know, whenever we need that extra oomph to come on, we can call them in and they come in and do their thing. As you see, we have the lovely Miss Brittany Donald. Uh, she's been on Unscripted with Bruce Johnson on WUSA Channel 9, giving a fan perspective on all DC sports. How are you doing tonight, Miss Lady? I'm doing great. Peace out there. <laughs> glad to hear it, glad to hear it. How about you, DC People's Champ? How are you doing tonight, sir? It's too fucking cold. This is ridiculous. That's what I was about to ask you about. I know you be out there on the lift circuit, you know, making money on the side, doing yeah, nah, your thing. fuck that. Not to <laughs> I was about to say, I know you was making some good money, everybody jumping in and out of uh, lifts because it's too cold to be walking. Man, listen, nah, I'm cool. <laughs> I'm cool. You said the bills, the bills do, can I'm, get paid another day, huh? Yeah, exactly. I can, I'm going to do this shit and go home. I feel you. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm jumping right back in the lift and getting right back under the blankets on the couch. Right. Watching some TV. With the heat on. Uh, you know it. Extra heat. <laughs> Extra Word. heat and some adult beverages, you know. Yep. To yes. keep nice and nice and warm. You know, we already got a couple of drinks going at the studio tonight. You know how we do. But this is going to be a special episode because we're going to bring you all sports tonight. DC sports is in turmoil as always. And we're going to have the great Super Bowl 53 preview roundtable with these illustrious guests I have to the right of me. That so, we're never going to see for another 20 years. So I mean, it's going to be, I think it's going to be. A nah, epic. nigga, you're going to see me. <laughs> They're in the me. audience. Yeah, okay. <laughs> hey, I plan to be there one day. I want to get to a Super Bowl. I want to get to a Super Bowl and actually go. I don't know if I can afford it. Because I heard some of the tickets were like five to six thousand dollars. We'll crowd chair for you. You're, you're good. Yeah, I, I, I want to make it, but uh, you know that'll be a long shot. We gotta we gotta do a lot more shows. Man, you gonna have to you have to get back on your street nigga shit to be able to afford it. I might yeah, I might gotta rob somebody at the game for they ticket. Break yourself, food. Give me your ticket. Nigga. It's kickoff in five minutes. Let's ticket go. Ticket check, homie. Ticket check. <laughs> hey man, we gotta do what we gotta do to live our dreams, baby. Word. That's what it's all about. Word. But uh, we definitely going to get into it tonight. We're going to talk some DC sports first. Uh, I'm not even sure where to start with all the news that's coming out in DC sports. I guess we'll go to the we'll go to the Redskins since we got football on tap. Redskins have made some interesting moves. Uh, as of yesterday, they promoted Kevin O'Connell to officially be the offensive coordinator. Say that he will be calling the plays. I'm not too sold on it with Jay's track record, but I'm we don't believe you. You need more people. He's I mean, a micromanager. There's no way. I mean, I'm I'm still trying to figure out his old position because it said he was the offensive passing coordinator. Yeah, he was promoted. I've never heard of that position before in well, my life. A A K A K A. He was the one blowing smoke up Jay's ass, saying, "Throw the ball." <laughs> I Just hope saying. not. Yes, man, yeah. all the way. But For sure. uh, uh, Brittany, you were speaking about uh, some, I forgot which player said that he was like the next Sean McVay or whatever with his play calls and play designs. I haven't really had a chance to look into him too much. There's a couple analysts out there that are saying he's like the next um, Sean McVay. He's young. He has a vision. He's like up and coming. All these things. But I mean, come on. You can't thrive under Jay Gruden. Let's be real. I mean. Seriously. I mean, it's, he's going to step on his neck all the way. Come on. I mean, I'm hoping for change. That's all we can do is hope with the situation. The I've been hoping for 25 part. years. So, <laughs> yeah. Keep Kid, hope alive. DC people, Shannon, what do you think about this uh, <clears throat> promotion of this guy that's supposed to be the next up and coming thing? Well, it's funny because then the original OC, they moved him up to, what did they move him up to? Like senior offensive yeah. assistant. Uh, assistant. Wrote, yeah. Yeah. Senior yeah. offensive yeah. assistant. Office assistant. assistant. Yo, I'm like, yo, what are these dudes <clears throat> doing? right now with the coaching staff, He actually man. got demoted, though, for that. Well, yeah. because they no, technically had him a, listed as the OC. Well, they actually had him listed as the that's OC it. last year. On, I didn't see that until, like, week 12 when they put the graphic up and it had his name at the bottom as OC Matt Cavanaugh. I hadn't seen that all season until about week 12. And to me, that's more of Jay trying to distance himself from the inconsistent offense that's been a staple of the time that he's been here. I so think he got demoted. Trash. Well, it, yeah, I heard, like he got demoted and homeboy. So they got would call promoted. that. Oh, they call that a demotion. I mean, yeah, that's what they've been saying out in the saying. ether. Yeah, uh, that's what I've been reading well, and hearing. Well, I mean, so. he he came from the quarterbacks coach to the offensive coordinator spot in a year. 
quarterbacks coach. And then he got rid of Matt LaFleur, who was the quarterbacks coach, who was the offensive coordinator for I forgot which team, but it's a team that made the playoffs. So, like you said, Brittany, it's a long track record of Jay micromanaging and getting people out of here that have more talent than him, i.e. Sean McVay, who's going to be playing, coaching in the Super Bowl this upcoming Sunday. So some of the other moves that were made, uh, we uh, Rob Ryan uh, got signed today as the inside linebackers coach. I'm fat ass. I, I, I'm not mad at Tampa. this move. They, they were also <laughs> rumors. Dynasty. Well, they were also rumors of uh, Rex coming here. Huh. Also, that I was surprised to see Rob. But as an inside linebackers coach, I'm not too mad at that. I couldn't give him the defensive coordinator spot because that we were talking about before the show. I really think his daddy was the best of all three of the so Ryan's. Wait, hold up though. So you said Rob lot, Ryan. Though. Hold up. You said Rob Ryan is the inside linebackers coach? He is now the so inside now, linebackers. So then so they have an inside and outside linebackers coach? Oh yeah, you definitely have to with a three four scheme because the inside linebackers responsibilities are way different from the outside linebackers. So yeah, you well, break you that. Played, down. You played defense back in the day, so you would know better than I would. <laughs> yes, sir. Yeah, I'm the inside saying. yeah, the inside linebacker position is very different from the outside linebacker position in the three four. You have different responsibilities, you have different zone coverage, different depths, like you've seen with Mason Foster in some of his good pass coverage. He gets enough depth to force the quarterback to try to fit him into a tight window, i.e. when we saw DJ Swearinger getting all of those easy interceptions, or sometimes he wouldn't get deep enough and the quarterback would throw the needle. But Did it, you understand that? Because I did. I okay, did. Oh, but Brittany, I, oh, Brittany's the, on it. Okay, well, the bad. line is... No, I'm, I'm just, I'm just, per- I'm just saying. Personally, <laughs> the line is not the problem in my eyes. The, line, the, se- the secondary is the problem. That's what needs to be fixed. You ain't lying. The well, secondary you are not is hard. Well, it's all a mo- I mean, it's all a moving piece. The front seven's playing well. And then the back end was playing well, but once the the middle of the, the linebackers started getting exposed, because if you notice toward the end of the season, more teams are going sideline to sideline and not running toward yeah, them because they know why line, inside linebackers are lack in pass coverage. It's scheme and exposed. Yeah, so that's well, why they're yeah. definitely going to have to draft more. And with the back end, with you know Dunbar going down, that I I never thought Dunbar was as critical as he was until I saw some of the plays that he made converting from wide receiver his third year as DB. He definitely made some strides and definitely made the defense better and with the people you know interchangeable parts and you had a lot of youth out there so I mean the secondary was an issue but you also had it towards the end of the year the teams were going against a lot of elusive quarterbacks so they were getting pressure but they weren't getting home which was leaving the DBs exposed and for the comeback routes and the quarterback scrambling broken plays so the DBs looked worse than they were because it was a a product of everything else that was going on in my opinion so let me ask you sorry let me ask you this what do you think about haha because I mean that's gonna be that's gonna come into play you know this on the off season so what do you think I actually saw I actually thought he played worse than he did I saw a report today where they actually graded him on his coverage, and it was actually better than I thought. I'm going to have to go back and look at some film. It got so frustrated at the end of the season, I wasn't looking at film over again. So I'm going to have to go back and reanalyze his plays specifically because I did see him, I felt, got exposed early when he got here. But from the from the report that I read today, apparently he definitely improved later in the season. It might have been too late because there were so many other holes on the defense that were getting exposed that you just threw him in a mix with everybody else. But I got to go back and look at it to, before I can make an honest assessment on his total play. But DJ's gone, so, I mean, there's a hole to fill. Yeah, know? well, you got Monte Nicholson, you got you got Ha Ha, and then you have the draft class. I mean, it's too early because there's still so much bad stuff going on in the organization that I don't even want to look that far ahead until everything gets so, settled. So, real quick, uh-huh. I heard a rumor. Okay. I don't know how true the rumor is that they're thinking about bringing in D. Hall as DB's coach. I heard he did put his name in the uh, arena for that, but they hired uh, Ray Horton for that uh, earlier, and I believe it was uh, late last week. Ray Horton, he uh, is the DB's coach. Uh, Brian Angelique. Angelicio is the new tight ends coach, and Nate Cazor is the new special teams coach. He uh, replacing uh, Ben Kotwika. He left and went to Atlanta, I believe. And all of these replacements that everybody was talking about, they fired. They were not fired. Their contracts had expired, and they went to work elsewhere. So more of the D.C. media spin to get more clickbait yeah. and all of that stuff. So as I said, I always tune in to Sports on the Hill podcast. D.C. Sports Without the Politics every yeah, Monday man. night, 7 to 9, and every other Thursday night from 9 to 10.30, which will be going live tomorrow night also. Ding. Shameless plug. You're welcome. But, uh, 
Let's get into some Wizards talk there, Ken. Uh, I know they're playing right now. I know yes. Robbie, he's at the game courtside. He did a Facebook Live a little while ago. Shout out, Robbie. Yeah, if they get a win. Matter of fact, the whole Wizards roundtable is at the game tonight. Robbie's courtside. The other guys are a nosebleed. So we'll give you two different perspectives sure. of the game Monday night when they oh, break shit. it down. Wizards That's roundtable right. for Sports in the Hill Podcast. And I was supposed to be at the game tonight courtside. And she is a warrior. I want to thank Double you for AC that. Double A seats. She told me that. And I right was like, behind the you, media tent. I'm like, here. if you need to go... I I understand. We'll try to find her face. She was like, no, I committed to you first. I'm going to be there. And that's a team player. That's what we love with True Radio Network. I think she was nuts, but that's with me. (laughs) (laughs) The Wizards suck, though. I mean, I'm not going to say too much. I'm not going to say they suck. I'm going I'm to be PC. You know what? Fuck being PC. They why, do why, suck. why? They do suck. They've lost three of their last four games. Like, right now, they're leading the Indiana Pacers, but the Pacers are going to be without their big star, Victor Oladipo, for the remainder of the season. He tore his uh, quadriceps tendon mm. um, the, uh, last Wednesday. So, right now, they're playing a, a, an Indiana team without their star, and right now, they're up. By looks like thirteen, nice. but I mean anything can happen. Like yet last night they played last. This is the second of a back to back, and they had to play on the road in Cleveland where they were down as much as like twenty three, oh and it took a bunch of reserves. No Beal, no Porter, no Bryant. A bunch of reserves managed to bring this team back to only lose by three. After they were down by 20-plus points throughout the game, reserves brought them back. That is a telling, that's a telling, telling stat. That, that's a telling, telling sign right there that maybe Scott Brooks needs to rally these guys, the starters' cages and say, hey, look, these guys managed to bring us back. Maybe they need to be starters. It's been done before. I remember watching the Boston run for their 18th championship, and sometimes the starters would come out flat. Doc would start the bench guys and say they wanted it more. Y'all go out there and play. That's what needs to be done. That's where, as I've stated before, this team needs a veteran leadership, a veteran presence in that locker room. And I don't think Scott Brooks is the coach that's going to put his foot down and force these guys to do what needs to be done. And they were playing better. I know last week they were. They had won seven out of uh, ten. They went on a you know little losing streak. But that's what I feel with all of this talent and no leadership, coach or player, that's what you get. I mean, Bill's been having some good games, some bad games. I believe he only had 18 in the game uh, previous to the Cleveland game. And uh, that, you know, spurred helped slow them down. But uh, this team has a, has talent. It just has to find direction and, and, you know, get it going in the same way. What do you think, Brittany? Um, bring back <laughs> Kelly Oubre, my boy. Oh, well, that was, an inter- that was an interesting <laughs> trade. I, I went on this Sorry. show and said how pissed off I was we definitely that they did. let go of Oubre because yeah. he was the energy and the defensive spark mm-hmm. for this team. Yeah. Real quick, I'm just going to say this. The last four games before tonight, Golden State, 126-118 here at home. Went to Orlando, one by four, and Orlando trash. Okay, <laughs> let's see that. San Antonio. San Antonio is always usually a good team. Lost to them 132-119. Lost to them by 13. They've lost to them since 1999. Down there. That is true. <laughs> we they talked about never, that on Monday They have night not show. won in San Antonio I since that. I was, I was like, in high damn. school. I heard that. I was like, That's damn. a solid team, though. No yeah, matter I mean, what. Yeah, they are a solid team, team, but I was, like, I was in high school. I hadn't even gotten my first piece. Okay, never mind. Um, <laughs> but no, they lost to them by 13. And then last night, again... They only lost by three, but if you look at the if you look at how the game played out, you would have thought like you would have thought that they just got blown out. So it just goes to show you that right now this team is sitting tenth in the Eastern Conference at twenty one and twenty nine, and they're going into the All Star break. Right now, this team right here needs to go on a serious run. I mean, it's an improvement from the beginning of the season. So, I mean, yeah, they've been exactly. playing better. Yeah. It's, um, I mean, with Wall being out, with Morris being out, Porter just getting back. Brooks is trying to find a lineup that, you know, works on a consistent basis. But when you don't have a strong defensive core besides – a reason who they had to trade for. They've never some had type a defense of, ever. The defense has been horrible for years. That is true. And that's why I think. And that's why I think it's, it's going to have to come from a free agency with them to get a lockdown. With what cap guy. money? What uh, with what cap money? Well, that's do we why. Have? Well, they say Otto was on the trade block. They say they aren't. They aren't going to trade Bill. They aren't going to trade Wall. But Otto, my cousin, by two or three, you know, ways away, 
But, you know, we related somewhere down the line. Once yeah, removed? Okay. Yeah, once removed, <laughs> twice stepmother, grandmother. I don't know. It's, 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 I got to go you So know, that's check your it uncle's out. mother's cousin's brother and shit? Yeah. Okay. Just like Aaron well, Donald's so. my cousin once yeah, removed yeah, yeah, also. Yeah, you know, hell like yeah, hell yeah. My family. See, we all connected somehow. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I ain't related but, to none of these niggas. <laughs> <laughs> but I think Otto will probably be shipped shit. out and uh, clear some room. But they, they need a defensive specialist to come on this team, even if it's on a box or if it's a two guard, because – the the White Howard grab they tried, which who's I knew was a hurt. Way. Exactly. And who's gonna pick the team with the, with the GM that we have? Like, oh, listen, we, man, we definitely, we definitely gonna talk about Ernie. Listen, we definitely gonna talk listen, about Ernie. Listen, man, the White the White the White Howard man dealing with a back injury, but we know why he got that back he's injury. Old. We're not gonna no. It's not because he's old because he's the bottom. Okay, never mind. Uh, like I said, <laughs> okay, my bad. I, I steer clear. Oh yeah, I like okay, that. My bad. I okay, my clear bad. the bedroom yeah, activity. Went away a bit. I, 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 it was unsocial for a little bit, and then it kind of died down. I'm freestyling because all the other distractions going on. But but no. The bottom. Here's the funny thing: is like tonight's game. This is the first game that Otto Porter uh, has started tonight since he came back from injury. Most of these games he's been playing mm-hmm. from the bench, mm-hmm. and tonight he's finally starting. It looks like the team has finally got a bit of a spark. They just went into halftime, and they are still leading Indianapolis. I'll give you the score right here: fifty-nine forty-five. So they're doing pretty well tonight. But a, a, a basketball game is four quarters. No and doubt. they've only done play two. So you know the other who two? he reminds me of? Who? Rondo. It's like you co- he comes in and it's just like can kill it or it can just like be awful. Oh, I love Rondo. I do too. I love Rondo. And people hate him. I love Rondo. But he can come in and score 40 <laughs> and then he can come in and score like. Well, I don't need I don't need Rondo to score. I just need I him to him dish too. the I just need him to dish the ball. I remember some of those games with the Celtics when I was watching the Celtics. Oh man, some of those games I was sitting there like that dude is amazing. But well, he check. has a lot of haters out there. Of so course, a lot. I mean I mean that that two piece he laid hey, on hey, CP three a couple of months ago let's, called let's, a lot. Let's bring, of it, let's bring it back here, guys. Let's, let's not talk about Rondo. He's not here in DC. <laughs> I'm We're just talking saying. about DC. No, like let's, <laughs> let's, let's, let's bring it back. Well, guys. maybe they can bring in Rondo. Yeah. Yeah. I would love that. I would Shit. too, but we know that's not going to happen. I'm about to say, you got y'all, championship? y'all. I'm about to say, whatever you got in that cup, man, pass it along. <laughs> no, right my now, brother, you got no. to get your own. Rondo's underrated. <laughs> he really so is. There's yeah, a Rondo, lot more Rondo players is, in this league. Yeah. I'm not saying Rondo, Rondo is not underrated. I'm just saying he will never come and play here. Yeah, that's true. Maybe that's the end true. of his maybe the end of his career. Our own, <laughs> that's all I'm saying. He will never come play here. He's bred here. I mean, we, that, well, well, we spoke. I don't give a shit. Well, KD said he don't want to play in. What you think, Ron? Why you think Ron want to be here? That's what I'm saying. He's not going to come because of that. I mean, it's 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 a complex issue. We spoke. It's I spoke about this so actually on another podcast I did early in the week about DC sports and why it's hard for athletes to succeed here. And I, I mentioned, you know, LA, New York, the bigger markets, but they still have cultural stuff you can do after midnight. And DC, after 11 o'clock, it ain't nothing but trouble out here. There's Bliss Nightclub, though. And Stadium Club. Exactly. Them niggas, <laughs> like, exactly. Them, niggas, them niggas go to Park and exactly. 14. Fuck out of here. Just, just I mean, like Lamar Odom was caught at the Stadium Club. Oh, really? I mean, we're stadium. not going to talk about I mean, Lamar Odom. We're going to move on. We're going to move on. Who was, the, who was the cat that got the contract here that went to Brooklyn that got, after he got his contract, he got caught on 14th Street trying to pick up a prostitute? Oh, gosh, what was it? What was that dude? Uh, he used to be for KG. He was in Brooklyn. I forgot his name. That, that's how That's how much he sucks. This is, this is I can't even remember his name. This is true radio on WLVS. Radio. This I mean, that's we're we gonna move on to the caps. <laughs> caps. We're about to go down a dark road. I mean, yeah, I'm about to say, let's, 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 let's talk about the caps. We, talk about the, we ain't gonna well, talk about somebody trying to get a prostitute on 14. I mean, <laughs> it's, it's on the record. He it's got charged like, I don't right give after a he got fuck. a big contract. There's a lot of people that got he got caught on 14th though, Street trying to pick up a lot of people. I ain't one of them. Fuck out of here. I mean, I'm just, I'm just, Howard now. I'm just reporting the news. That's all I'm doing. I'm just reporting the news. Bring out the tapes. All right, we can get in, we can move on to the caps. Unfortunately, uh, we mentioned last week before the All Star break, they went on. They were on a seven game losing streak. They were 0 4 and three. They're three five and two on their last ten. They actually don't play until Friday night when they play the Calgary Flames, which is going to be a tough game because Calgary's playing very well. I believe they're 34 13 and six. Uh, that'll be the first Jeez. game without Ovi because he was suspended for not. Uh, participating in an All Star weekend, they have a you know you could have served it before or after the break. He chooses to serve it after the break, so it's going to be a tough game. He was probably in rehab. 
Well, actually, yes. <laughs> actually, he actually he was on vacation. No, actually, he was on vacation playing with dolphins that his wife put a oh, video up oh, on Instagram. Nah, Ovi told that if I can't play for my country in the in the Olympics, oh, fuck y'all. Yeah. I ain't playing in the All Star game. Man, Ovi don't fuck. give a damn. That's very true. Ovi. He told them. She told them, suck my dick. I ain't <laughs> playing in your All Star game. Ovi don't give a fuck. He got that cup now. No you know, we, do, we no suck That's anymore. Not, he's in rehab. I mean, did you see him? I thought he would die, have died. Hey man. That celebration. Ovi said hey. we not we not gonna be sucked this year. We have the cup. I'm not exactly. playing the All Star game. They're not gonna win a cup this year either. Whoa. You know I, what? I, I can't agree with that I, statement. Coaching change means a lot. I'm, I'm, they, in the, they, they I'm, I'm on have, the fence with that one. They still have a similar system. The only problem is they aren't playing solid defensively. As I, I my That's side, always the, been their problem, though. But They've been as, weak defensively. But then on that stretch yeah. run, they got it all together. That's why I think that this was just, this seven game losing streak was the Stanley Cup hangover. Because normally teams have it at the beginning of the season, but because this team faced so many uh, injuries in that first push. That they were playing, you know, they would. They've been first in the metro for the most but of the Pittsburgh season. Pittsburgh never has a cup hangover. But Pitt, but you see what, but do you see what Pittsburgh is at right now? Pittsburgh is is hurting right now. They can't get it together. They're Puck actually Pittsburgh. in the. They'll be fine. That that team plays better with their back against the ropes, and That's our cool. team plays better with our back against the ropes. Also, the problem is. I think last year, and I love the Cavs, and I was super happy, but I thought the luck swung her way a little bit. It is. Oh, Puck oh, Luck goes along. Like she just said she loves the Cavs instead of the Cavs. I said Cavs. No, Puck Luck. like you said Cavs. In the playoffs, yeah. no, okay, play yeah. Puck, Puck Luck goes a long I'm way. In the playoffs, right. Puck Luck goes a long way. The bounces, the 50-50 puck. Last year. Exactly. And it can really also hard. go that way again. That's why I say everybody's panicking. Everybody's talking about we need to. They, this, is, this is ironic because this is the same thing that happened last year. And this team is only two points off of the pace they were on last year. And I remember getting into it with a bunch of Cavs fans talking about, oh, we need to trade for Mike Green. Oh, we need to bring in a big name. And what did we do? We bought in some couple of key pieces that help on the run. Everybody was panicking. Folks were telling me I don't know hockey. Well, we and traded what them happened? players away too. Though. Yeah, I mean, we had Mojo. Me, he was yeah. gone. But subtraction by addition, we got a cup without them on the squad. The he he was just like Andre Burakovsky is trade bait. I'm hoping they get rid of him because he's had the potential for four or five years, but potential has gotten many coaches fired, and his play on the ice has been lacking. Jacob Rana, who's only in his third year of uh, professional hockey, is surpassing his career highs already at 16 goals, and, Ron, and uh, Andre has six. And this is his fifth year, a contract year at that. And he has flashes. Yeah, he had the game in, in the Stanley Cup playoffs when he had the two goals that propelled the Capitals to win. But, okay, what else, what else has he done in his six, seven-year, six-year career here that makes him somebody that we can't get rid of? And you have another team scouting that they see the potential and think that he would be better there. I say, get his ass out of here. And Dmitry Ordov, if he keep on acting up, I say, get his ass out of here too because – you got to be sound defensively, especially if you – this is why I was happy when they got that Mike Green walk because everybody was enamored with that 30-goal season. Yeah, that was one out of, what, nine? And then he's a defensive liability because he takes too many chances on offense, and that's why we have all these odd man rushes and all these six, seven-goal games because you're leaving your goalie out there, you know, by itself because you're, you're taking chances, making blind passes, wraparound passes, being too fancy when you know keeping it simple is what won you to cut. Well, I would say also, too, like, you have to prepare for these younger and faster teams, like the Maple Leafs and the Lightning. I mean, those teams are younger and faster and skate harder. Mm. I don't know. I and mean, they said the to, same. And we're a little older and slower. And they said the same <laughs> thing last year. What did it? The four check, the solid defense, and solid goal. Scoring, one, though, helped. Yeah, scoring definitely helps, but you still want to have more. The, Oh, yeah, you're still going to have those 3 2 2 1 games where you're going to have to be solid defensively when you get that lead goal and lock it down for 15 minutes in that third Essentially, period. Essentially, you have to be a team that wins every way possible, including winning ugly. And that's what they did. And that year. was that was the art, the knock on the Redskins before they went on their slide was that people were not happy with them winning ugly. And it's like, well, shit, we're winning. Why does it matter how it looks? And that's the same thing with the Caps. It, do, it shouldn't matter how it looks. It shouldn't matter how it's done. You win, you win. No. Period. I, I agree with you, but when you loss. get to the playoffs, that shit doesn't matter anymore. Like, 
the, those ugly wins are going to be out the window when you get towards real teams that know how but to win consistently Most playoff and hockey solid. is ugly wins, though, because you got solid defensive teams. You and got hockey, solid not goals. football. Yeah, ho- oh, yeah, ho- no, hockey, hockey. Yeah, no, hockey, hockey is a different breed. Oh, hockey, breeze. the ugly yeah. wins yeah, will hockey, get you yeah, there because yeah, the scoring is lower, right? Yeah, but, but football, football, ugly wins. Those ugly wins, I was not sold on that Redskins team at all. That oh, Redskins team was weak. Uh, I can't and not agree that with good. That. I'm now, sorry. See, we didn't slip back in the Redskins. See, kid, we didn't slip back in the Redskins. Were, they were, they weren't that good. See, kid, the red skins. You know her blood boils about Jay Gruden under the under the covers, man. He bring the red so this is WLVS up. Radio. We're gonna move on from the, <laughs> the Redskins to another DC Sports team. Oh man, uh, it's crazy. But uh, oh, before we move on from the Cavs, like I mentioned, they play Friday night. They play Calgary at uh, seven o'clock. They also have a game on Super Bowl Sunday, which has been a tradition. For the Caps, they've done pretty well. They play Boston at uh, 12.30 on NBC. Uh, the Capitals have a 14-game winning streak against Boston, which is the longest in the NHL, currently against any team. So hopefully if they don't have a good showing against Calgary, they'll get that mojo back against Boston because they definitely have their number. And uh, as I said, the trade deadline is approaching. Hopefully Andre Burakovsky, his name has been tossed around. And I want to throw this nugget out that I was watching, looking at the waiver wire yesterday. Somebody I wouldn't mind seeing come to the Capitals. Somebody I can't stand, but I would love to see him on our team. Wayne Simmons is an unrestricted free agent in Philly. Oh. I would love to see Wayne Simmons come down here. Andre, get out of here and have, uh, have him on that third line. Add a little bit of that, that, that funk. And you got Wilson on the top line. I, 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 might, gotta call up, uh, I might gotta call up Brian McClendon and put that bug in his ear. I'm not mad at that. Hey, I would I'm love not mad to see at that. that. I'm I would not love mad at that. that. I think I'm that not, would be a good spark yeah. for the for the team, especially on the third line. I don't. I'm not mad at that. All right. And I know you can't say, but I'm not mad at that. All right, I'm gonna That's make sure I send news. an email to Brian McQuinn and Lamar to see if you know we can get that in the works. Trade this nigga really think he that connected. I'm right. just saying, you <laughs> know, I know some people that know some people that know some people, you know. So AKA he, he don't know dial. nobody. <laughs> he on he on speed email. He has to make a call. Make a call. Yeah. He's standing, he's standing outside the like, yeah, he just went in his move. office just now. <laughs> he, he, he knows somebody who he think he, he, he hey, he's a man. plug and they ain't the plug. The only plug he's doing is plug-ins, nigga. Hey, man. <laughs> However I get in there, as I told you, I don't care how. I'm going to get in there. Said. I That's don't care. Said. Oh, yeah, okay, true. Pause. Damn, we was talking about sports. I don't know how we got it. <laughs> All right. Let me get to, let's wrap up the D.C. sports segment with a little, with, you know, baseball is around the corner. They reporting for spring training. And I think, believe, the pitch is reporting next week, I believe. And we got National Catches news. report. I love that. I love that. Yeah, the so they'll be reporting report. soon. That. We all know about the Bryce uh, sweepstakes. The rumors are it's still between the Nationals, but Philly is in the front Mom, runner he's spot. He's going to Philly. I mean, it's done. fuck I'm, that. It's done. I'm he not go really. To Philly. I'm, no I, he go to he's Philly. Gone. I have one Nats jersey, and I will burn <laughs> that shit because it's Bryce Harper. No, nah, don't burn it. Fuck out. No, 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 don't burn it. You get that to me. I'll take that. Say, give it to him. No, he's not. Now he's not going to get five. That's what I heard. Nah, he's not going to. Philly can't afford to give him five. He's going to. He's probably if he does go to Philly, it's going to be more like a four hundred, maybe four twenty-five million deal. So yeah, I mean the, the Nationals. <laughs> they say the Nationals are from three twenty-five. I'm not. I'm not sure because Bryce has been real quiet. He hasn't said too much. I think I mentioned on our show before. I think Jason Worth not being here last year really affected him because them two was real close. He you know showed them how to be a professional bas- baseball player. And I don't know if I don't know if he really wants to go. I just think he's you know listening to offers. So I wouldn't be surprised if he stays. If he goes. It is what it is. I already said I got my man Juan Soto is another key piece that they can build around. They made some solid uh, moves in the offseason. And it's still time to pick up other folks. But, uh, Brittany, I know you already said he's pretty much gone. So you think he's gone to Philly already? I think he's gone. But I will say this. The Lerner mm-hmm. family is like one of the best sports families in our town. I mean, the Nationals are kind of the bright spot for us. Yeah, definitely. definitely. What they about actually you? make really good decisions and make good moves. And they have a really great... You know, program, franchise, whatever, front office. So, I mean, yeah, Mike Rizzo deserves know. a lot of credit. Definitely, definitely. But I'd be gone for four hundred twenty <laughs> deuces. What about you, DC People's Chan? What do you think about the I, Bryce situation? I, I mean, this situation has play, was play, was playing out even during the season last season. Yeah. Where all the talk was is that when they had the All Star game here in DC and he won the home run derby, that this was going to be his last, you know, big moment in DC. Uh, they missed the playoffs and everything like that. I'm I'm very I'm very very conflicted when it comes to this. I loved I loved Juan Soto 
that that kid is a player. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. that kid is a player. And then they also went and they shored up their their rotation, get making some moves in pit in terms of pitching. Oh yeah, I'm definitely gonna go over those. Yeah, I mean the the Nationals are definitely trying to put pieces together to make another run this past season. But I think the catalyst would be Harper, given the fact that his entire career has been spent here. He's the face of this franchise. I'm hoping, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that something can be done to keep him here, but I'm af- I'm afraid it might not happen. Yeah, it's a little possibility, but like I said, when you got a Juan Soto that you can still build around, outfield a strong arm, can hit the ball like crazy at 19 years old, so you know he's only going to get better. That's what's crazy with the, <clears throat> excuse me, the numbers that he put up in this you know, short rookie season that he was even in talks for the rookie of the year. So just to go over some of the uh, signings the Nats have made, uh, they picked up uh, Greg Holland, a pitcher. He's more of a, a closer uh, setup guy. He signed a one-year, $3.75 million deal. One of the surprise moves that it, uh, caught me off guard was the second baseman, Brian Dozier. He signed a one-year, $9 million deal from the Dodgers. Uh, the, one of the big splashes that D.C. people's chance spoke about on the starting rotation, Anibal Sanchez, two-year, $19 million contract. They uh, re-signed Trey Turner uh, before arbitration. He got a one-year, $3.725 million deal. Uh, Rendon, who uh, definitely deserved the big contract, he went through arbitration and got a one-year, $18 million deal. And this is his last year arbitration, so next year they're going to have to even get that man a long-term deal. They better or, pay Tony two bags. Man. Yeah, they got to. I love Rendon. He's one of the most consistent guys at the plate. And he, uh, you know, he's – if it wasn't so many good third basemen in the, in, the, in the National League, he'd be like a two- or three-time all-star uh, Golden Glove. But you got Arenado, and you got some of these other up-and-coming guys, Goldschmidt out in um, uh, Arizona. So it's hard for him to get even a nod, just like, um, you know, Nick Backstrom in the Capitals, you know, has so many good centers that, you know, he gets overlooked. But he's definitely a key piece of this team. His bat is definitely needed, and his defense is great. They uh, actually re-signed Matt Adams, who they traded in the middle of last season, re-signed him to a one-year, $4 million deal. Uh, they got in a cow – I'm not even going to try to pronounce his last name, a pitcher – in a trade that they got. They also made another key uh, starting rotation move with Patrick Corbin from Arizona. He signed a six-year, $140 million deal. He was like the key prize of uh, free agency in the pitching ranks. Uh, They actually traded for uh, Jan Gomez, a catcher. Uh, They got Trevor Rosenthal from uh, St. Louis for one year, $7 million. And they bought back Kurt Suzuki for the third time on a two-year, $10 million deal. They uh, traded him. He's been here a couple of times. I've always liked him. He was always a good catcher for Gio when Gio was uh, killing it. But uh, they definitely made some key moves. They're not standing pat, and they're looking to get back to the playoffs in 2019. I'm going to make this one quick point before we take a break to go into our Super Bowl talk. Yes, sir. I mean, you look at the two pitching acquisitions for the starting rotation. You add those two, along with Matt Scherzer, who is a multiple-time Cy Young Award winner. Yep. You have Steven Strasburg, who went healthy. When healthy is a, is a player. No doubt. He is a player. So you, you already have those two cogs, and you add these two cogs, and then I'm pretty sure you're going to find yourself a fifth starter, and then you add a potential like setup man or closer. That was the main problem with the when that slash season was pitching. Uh, because outside – no, 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 listen. No, I didn't. Because outside of Scherzer, yeah. there wasn't much – yeah. Only person, other person was Geo, right? Way. And then only other per- pitcher they had was Geo until they traded him. Yeah. After that, it was Scherzer, and then who else? I think and it was more. Bull- we was the playoffs and the bullpen was, was trash. The bullpen was trash too. Well, mm-hmm. it was more, in my yeah. opinion, and more the way Martinez was managing the pitchers with like Scherzer. He knows his status. Oh. Him being a first uh, first year manager, if you're up six nothing, and he's at 110 pitches. Get that man out of there in the seventh inning. No reason to, okay, I'm going to let him make his own choice. Scherzer is an is a, is a alpha male. He's never going to want to come out the game, even if he got 150 pitches and the game is over. He wants to complete game. He has to make that decision to get them out of there. So it was a lot of fatigue that went with the starters and went with the bullpen is why it faltered, I felt. Everybody questioned Dusty Baker and his management of the bullpen. Dusty took him out of that game, and we didn't go to the playoffs because he took like him, Scherzer out of the game when he was playing possessed. Well, I mean, I mean, that, I think he lived and died on that. Decision. I mean, everybody Honestly. because everybody throws his <laughs> his postseason record and bad pitching decisions, but he just makes a decision. If the pitchers don't execute when they go on the field, that's a whole other thing. He, I mean, it happened, but we didn't even make the playoffs under Martinez. We made the playoffs under Dusty. 
So even though they didn't win it all, they still made the playoffs. And I don't care about what anybody else says, though, Dusty's track record in the playoffs, but they made the playoffs. Martinez, they weren't even sniffing the playoffs. They had an up-and-coming team that wasn't even supposed to be good for another two years win the division out of nowhere. That says a lot about your management and with all the talent this team had, even though they had the, they had the most injuries in the MLB, but still, this is a talent deep team that has a great farm system that should not have missed the playoffs to the Atlanta Braves last year. That's just my opinion. I agree. All right, so you want to take a quick break and then we get in the Super Bowl? Yeah, let's go ahead and right? take a quick break before we get into this Super Bowl preview roundtable with all the storylines, referees included, in this uh, classic matchup, Super Bowl 53. We'll be back. True Radio Network on WLVS Radio. Be back in two minutes. Network on WLVS Radio coming back to you live for the Super Bowl preview roundtable. We have a great matchup between the New England Patriots and the LA Rams. Says who? Says me because the hoodie and Brady is involved, and I get to see another match of the dynasty trying to dispel the Joe Montana greatest quarterback myth that I've been trying to fight for the last 20 years. <laughs> Why? Why right. Because to Joe Mon because to me Joe Montana, he was a he was a great quarterback, but to me he was not the greatest. Before him I say John Elway was better than him. Now I have to put Brady over him. But everyone gives him the By, because they're more decorated. I don't know. Uh, it's I just mean, uh, I, well, I don't want to get into this conversation I mean, we, tonight. I mean, we, we you know how about, I feel. Oh, I feel like you are a product of the system. I don't. That's I n- don't necessarily true. feel like 
you're the best. I think you're the best in that system. Definitely. So I know there's a lot of other quarterbacks just, that I would throw out there that I think are better. I mean, with personally. the X Factor, it was Brad. Nah, with time Brady. out, time out. Nah, no. you can't put that line out there and then yeah. don't name names. <laughs> well, I, there, it is no secret that I love Aaron Rodgers, oh, and I boy. think Aaron Rodgers is the best of the best. And I'm Why did you open this can of worms? Yeah, that, this, is long, this is a this is an old, an old show and it's on. No idea. I'm the type that if you're gonna drop a line like that, Dan Marino, you better keep it going. Dan Marino, and then. And, and Aaron Rodgers, I think, is Dan, better, no, better look, than Brady. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm not going to make an argument about Dan Marino. Dan Marino was dope. Aaron Rodgers. He was not decorated, but no one puts Dan Marino up there no, with Dan the Marino, Steve Young or like. Oh, Dan oh, Marino, Steve Young. They just don't talk about them as much because they actually say they're not as decorated. Dan Marino isn't decorated. At but, all. But he is still mentioned at top. But now with Peyton, with Brady, with Breeze, and you really don't mention those. And Peyton Manning won a Super Bowl with that defense. He, he had the worst offensive performance of any quarterback in a Super Bowl ever, in the history of the Super Bowl ever. Hey, I mean, it doesn't so, matter. It's all about this, who won. They don't care about the storylines after the fact. They just care about who won so they can talk about it. We know how Speaking of storylines, what's the storylines for this game? Oh, boy, it's a mm-hmm. lot that of... That segue. Boy. Beautiful, beautiful segue, boy. DC People's Champ. DJ. Yeah, that was definitely <laughs> yeah. a beautiful segue. There are, in my opinion, there are multiple storylines in this game. You have the Bill Belichick old guard going against Sean McVay, the up-and-coming youngest coach to ever win a playoff game, looking to be the youngest coach to ever win a Super Bowl, the offensive genius that he is, the defensive specialist that Belichick is. Then you got Tom Brady, the decorated multiple but Super Wade Bowl champ. But Wade Phillips is a good defensive player. Oh, you and this yeah. Wade Phillips I thing, I mean, I love Brady. Wade Phillips. Oh, I'm sorry. I see yeah, no one likes it. I, I mean, Wade, Wade is quality. Bum, baby. Wade, Son of bum. Wade well, is the defense is he's been able mm-hmm. to take them far. The first year he's there, they go to a the because, high level. Because he players. always have talent there. He's never built the defense. He's always added on into a oh. defense that was always good. He's never been able to build the defense from scratch and be like, this is my defense and this is what we're going to do. That's that's why I can't really give him the full credit that everybody else does because anybody can add on, i.e. Uh, John Gruden, when he got his Super Bowl title after you know going to get into Tampa Bay after Tony Dungy built that team, he got that Super Bowl that he shouldn't have, you know, I don't yeah, feel I, like he I deserved. There, yeah. So that's the same thing. That's the same way I look at it. But I will say that Bill Belichick did coach for Cleveland. Exactly. And he built on the team from Bill Parcells. True. By the way. True. And that is the team that we have now who built well, that system, uh, put that system in place. But he and also. And he just polished it up can a I just say the only time That's I, all I'm going to say. Only, I mean, can I just say the only time I think about the Browns when I wake up in the morning and I take them to the Super Bowl? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, and then you bad. flush him down the toilet after yep. you finish taking okay, that early morning sabbatical. Okay, my well, bad. I mean they play like that. So I mean the Browns, hey, the Browns. I mean the Browns. Oh, don't sleep on the Browns. The they're Browns, better, they're you're right. Browns right. play some they're good they're ball. They're much better this year. than our team right now. <clears> to be honest, you know. they they don't Can have I say as much Baker Mayfield definitely was exceeded any expectation I had of him. Yeah, I have that to go on the record. Bold. Check out my Facebook page. I want to draft him. Yeah, I definitely have to get on get uh, get on my get on the record because I I was harsh on Cleveland the way they did Hugh Jackson because I thought that he got a raw deal. But after going back and looking at it and seeing the way Mayfield played after the fact and that Hugh was so dead set on playing him, he made his own bed. He had the line, and so Baker Mayfield definitely did make that team better. And their defense was balling all season. They was in every game. You know, they didn't have the record to get to the playoffs, but they're definitely a team to be looking at on the up and coming. But let's get into the Super Bowl game that we really came here to talk about. I'll go over a quick rundown of the stats at the tell of the tape of these two teams. On the offense, the Patriots uh, average 266 yards passing, which is eighth in the league. The Rams average 281, which is fifth in the league. Uh, rushing the ball, the Pats average 127 yards, which is fifth in the league, surprisingly. And the Rams average 139 yards, which is third in the league, with Todd Gurley doing his thing. Uh, total offense, uh, the Patriots put up 350, no, 393 yards, uh, which is fifth in the league. And the Rams put up 421 yards, which is second in the league. Points per game, the Patriots put up 27, 27, which is fourth in the league. And the Rams put up 32, which is second in the league. And the critical stat of third down conversions, the Patriots are 40%, which is 13th in the league, and the Rams are 45%, which is 5th in the league. 
Mm. Offensive well, teller. Stats are better on there. Yeah, they, they definitely are offensive team. Sean McVay yeah. has this team. Even without Gurley, with Gurley's performance last week. Yeah, even but uh, Sean McVay definitely has this team playing where they have a bunch of basically no name wide receivers that, as Brittany was mentioning before the show, that well mentioning during the show that no before the show it was before the show. Yeah, that uh, Sean McVay puts his players in position to win. He doesn't try to conform his players to his playbook. He knows what their strengths are and plays to it, and that's definitely going to be a key to the offense in this game. So what is what is your take of the offense of the Rams and the Patriots? Who do you think is going to have the advantage in this game? Brittany, I'm going to you first. Well, I will say that I think you avoided the elephant in the room that, you know, there's the Saints team that is definitely <laughs> trying to hijack the Super Bowl right now by that oh, terrible call. Yeah, it was a bad um, call. I, think that's, I thought it was going to die on, down. I'm getting, a, I'm getting a phone call. Champ's getting a phone call. <laughs> I, hey, it's not I me. They was, say they know you. I thought it was going <laughs> to die down. I thought it was going to die down, like, yeah, yeah, you know, nah, two mean, days late, late, but it is – Still the there. Butt hurt, the butt the season hurt ticket holders are Damn, suing the NFL. Oh, it's Mr. Indifferent. He says he doesn't give a shit. The butt no, hurt. No, I mean, the game happened. Yeah, it's nothing. That, that was the worst call, though. It was, that was that call bad. was trash. We, we all know that. That call was trash, but guess and what? There's nothing they can do about it. There's nothing they can do about it, but I will say that the I have some Atlanta season ticket holder girlfriends out there. Shout out to Jay and Hillary. Um, Shout out. But, but they, I was, I asked them today. I was like, "Oh, are you guys going to the Super Bowl? Like, with your city tickets?" And they're like, "Oh, the tickets were five thousand dollars." And then once like the teams were announced, it plummeted. So now they can get them for thirty five hundred, which isn't that much difference. But no one wants to see like a Rams Patriots Super Bowl. They want to see a Drew Brees and a Brady <laughs> matchup. And CP three. I might have to get on that street in, like, nigga shit with you to afford hey. Super Bowl tickets. Super Bowl. Yeah, damn. I got some folks in Atlanta. And man. so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and what I think about the game is no one is going to oh be the All almighty right. Patriots and that young Rams yeah, I'm team. I'm just hoping the rest Tom time. Brady yeah. has been there. He is the You're GOAT. You're witnessing greatness. He's been hurt one time in his career, seriously, in 2008, and they went 11-5. and five. You're witnessing so, greatness. Like, hold on. Kevin Hart, had, Kevin Hart had a very uh, good quotable thing in his comedy routine. Are you done? I'm done. Are you done? I mean, I'm done, you, Carlton. You, you can't. Oh. Right. It's not on you. <laughs> Come on now. I, knew, I ain't I'm just this. saying you, you can't argue with greatness, man. I mean, folks can you know throw all the cheater stuff all out that. there. I, I mean, fuck all that. He listen, was a six round pick. I, yeah. Listen, uh, that's fine. But let me tell you where my head is at. All right. Everybody said the same thing last year. When Philly was in the Super Bowl. And they and didn't deserve to win. If Malcolm Butler would have been in that game, they would have not won that Super Bowl. And everybody knows it. Everyone. Can I finish my point? I've sure. heard, I have heard it a couple times. <laughs> Can I finish my point? Hillary? Come on now. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> no, but everybody said the same thing about Philly. And this is before... Malcolm Butler was not in the game. They said this. They said that Philly didn't stand a snowball chance of hell against the great Tom Brady and the great Bill Belichick. What happened? With Nick Foles, a backup quarterback, they went out there and they beat the Patriots. And now we are coming to this year. Those you have piercing. a Rams team, extremely young, haven't been here before. Their coach hasn't been here before. Not A lot of these players have not been here before. And they're going up against a team that everybody's pretty much picking them to win the whole thing. You know what I think is going to happen? I think it's going to be a repeat of last year. I think the Rams go into Atlanta with everybody against them. And they're going to smack the Patriots in the mouth and take the Lombardi Trophy back to the West Coast. It depends two, on top Gur- Todd different. Gurley, though. Is he hurt or is he not There's two hurt? differences in the Rams and the Eagles so. of last year. The Eagles had a first-time coach that was an experienced offensive coordinator, and they had an older team. Even though they coaching staff was inexperienced, they still had veteran presence on that team. The Rams can't say that. That's the big difference. It's different when you have an inexperienced coach and you have veterans that's been there, done that, that know what to, to say and do to get everybody to go down. Just same thing with the Wizards. They don't have any veteran that's been there, done that. All right, when that up. pressure me, hits, yeah, no, that no, pressure, that hit, pressure bursts pipes. No, I got you, but no. Here's the thing. Yes, you're right. They don't have a veteran presence that's been there and done that. But they do have a veteran presence in 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 general. They have Aaron Donald, who has been a monster, and they have Adamican Sue, 
who, yes, he's been labeled as a dirty player, but and Dominican Sue has played been in, in no the big league game. a long time. But they time. played in no but, big but games. But Sue has been yes. terrible this no year. Pressure he, games. He has no pressure games. No well. pressure games as well. That's right. what I'm saying. Y'all, y'all missing my point. And that defense missing, has not been that good this you're year. You're missing my point. You're missing not. my point. I'm not saying that they that the veteran presence they have that they should know how to move in a big game. I'm just saying they have a veteran presence that knows that, look, we know the magnitude of this game. These young kids may not. We may not have been here, but we know the magnitude. So we need to tell these young kids, listen, you need to play this like it's a, like it's a legit game, like it's any other game. It may not seem like that, but it is. And how often I work with your kids? What? That you tell them what to do and they do it. How often I work with your kids? My son is five. He don't listen to shit I say. Exactly. You can tell them all you want, but when until the, until the time comes and they have to execute under them big lights, the biggest game of their career, yeah. pressure burst pipes. We've seen what happened with some of these folks. You know, when pressure comes, we saw in the playoffs, Ice the kicker. Should have been a victory. Missed the kick because pressure burst pipes. Young kicker, no experience. But let's get ready to get to the defensive stats. We don't want to go too long. We almost got on and got about – Five more minutes to wrap this up. Uh, defense, total yards. Patriots give up 359, uh, which is 21st. The Rams give up 358, which is 19th. Passing yards, the Patriots give up 246, which is 22nd. The Rams give up 236, which is 14th. Uh, rushing, the Patriots give up 112 yards a game, which is 11th. The Rams give up 122 yards on the ground, which is 23rd. Uh, the Patriots give up 20 points, which is uh, 6th. And the Rams give up 24, which is uh, – I can't even read my own handwriting. It's worse than the Patriots. We'll go with that. Uh, third down conversions, another telling stat, 38.6% for the Patriots, which is 16th, and 37.2, which is 12th for the Rams. So the Rams' defense has been advantageous in the playoffs. They've been getting pressure. They've been stopping a run effectively. That's definitely going to be the tell and tell with this game because the Patriots have been able to run the ball with Sony – Michael or Michelle or Sony Michelle. Michelle. That's my man. I gotta say that with my pinky. I gotta say that with pinky out, I guess. Sony Michelle. That's like that's like when you say Target is Target. Yeah, I gotta say that with my pinky out. Tony Michelle. I don't say Target, I say Target. Fuck all that. I mean he's a champion, so you gotta get it right. Yeah, they definitely uh running game is gonna be a key. If they can stop the run and get Brady, you know, dancing around, get some pressure on him, which I thought Kansas City would be able to do, which they weren't able to do, uh then it's definitely gonna play in their favor. I don't see it. I'm going with the Patriots, but I think it's going to be an interesting game to see how Belichick is going to try to confuse Goff and try to contain Gurley and stop that passing game that they do any and everything out of any and every formation. It's a, it's a, always an enjoyment to watch Sean McVay. I, I do actually miss him from being here. I might shed a tear real quick. But, um, do you miss the fade? Thug, a thug that, tear. that never worked? We don't miss it because he <laughs> Jay <laughs> still calls the damn fade. Street nigga going to shed a thug <laughs> tear out here. Hey, listen, man. I listen to those defensive stats, and the first thing that jumps in my mind is this is basically going to be an offensive shootout. Because these defenses are not – well, I won't say that. These defenses are bend but don't break. Yeah, exactly. Okay? Because they give up a lot of yards but not a lot of points. Mm -hmm. They're a bend but don't break defense. So it'll be interesting to see how these offenses, which in most of their stats they're ranked in the top ten, mm -hmm. how these offenses are going to be able to maneuver when it comes down to facing defenses that bend but don't break. Right, Sony Michelle has been playing amazing at running back for the Patriots, mm -hmm. and he's going up against a run defense that's not very good. So, as we saw in the AFC Championship game, the first possession that the Patriots had lasted pretty much half the first quarter, and all they did was run the football. They do the same thing against the Rams. They don't exploit you. The Patriots don't exploit you, and they'll do it over and over and over again. If you have an explosive offense, Until what's the best way to beat them? It. Keep I'm them still going with the Rams, though. I'm just going to put that out there. I think, we're going, going see, I think, I think we're going to see the same thing we saw against the Chiefs. <laughs> they, he held that offense to zero points for the first time all. See, they made Tyreek Hill disappear. I didn't think yeah. that was going to happen. And the Rams have some weapons, but the Kansas City offense was way more stacked, in my opinion. Than the Rams and the I'm way they made. With the Rams. I, I mean, just, I feel like the Patriots played really cup. solid defense in that Chargers game. I, I, that was more than Ben don't break. They were like, yeah, they dictated the pace were, of the game. Yeah, I mean, I Kansas mean, City had great. that great comeback at the end. You know, fourth quarter putting up twenty four points, but for the most part, the Patriots defense had them in check. But uh, 
Before we get out of here, let's go ahead. Ken, you said you're taking the Rams. We're going to go ahead and get a score prediction. We're going to go score prediction this time, too. I'm going to say Rams win 27-24. Uh, it's, it's going to be close. All right, Brittany. It's going to be close, but I think Legatron is going to be uh, the one that's going to make it happen. Just saying. All right. I'm going to say 34 Pats and 21 Rams. Okay. I'm going to go 38 Pats, 34 Rams. Oh. It's going to be a... It's going to be an interesting game. It's going to start out kind of slow, and it's going to pick up once the adjustments get made and everybody, you know, figures out what they're going to do and how they're going to do it. But be sure to tune in Monday night for Sports on the Hill podcast as we break down the game. As I said, the Wizards Roundtable are at the game tonight. They're going to break down that game and every other game from the week. Tune in tomorrow night for boxing, MMA, and some more Super Bowl coverage tomorrow night. Real quick, myself. real quick, not to cut you off, but there was breaking news that happened while we were on the air that Uh-oh. former uh, – Florida Marlins uh, manager who won a World Series with them in 2003, Jack McKenna, has just become a senior advisor to GM Mike Rizzo. Ah, I did see something about that. I forgot to write that down. Yeah, DC People's Champ. Good catch. You're welcome. But uh, as I mentioned, tomorrow night we'll be talking more boxing, MMA, and Super Bowl. Make sure you tune in to True Radio Network. We always got something going on. DC people chat. Let them know where you can find you. We'll get out of here. You can find me on the No Spots podcast Friday night, 9 p.m. on the True Radio Network. Myself and my boy Chris Kazama. Shout out to Kazama. We do the damn thing. Brittany, real quick. Um, you can find me on Facebook at, at Brittany Donald and on Twitter and Instagram, same. And I do want to hear from you, Redskin fans, about what you think about a possible Tannehill trade. Nice. All right, I'm out. True Radio, <laughs> WLBS, and I'm we out. out. See you next week. I'm out.